All right, you already know how this goes. Driving in my car, still at work, and we gonna get into this Deontay Wilder show. I want to say this before I talk about Deontay Wilder. Brian Custer, amazing interviewer, asked very good questions and questions that most of these interviewers do not ask. His um, YouTube channel is The Last Stand Podcast with Brian Custer. Um, very good interviewer, very good. Now, with that being said, I'm just going to talk about the key points and I make it about Brian and what he asked, but I'm going to respond to what was asked and what was said. With that being said, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you really like this up to the channel, I won't go too deep into my intro because I'm going to get into this video while I have time to do it. So here's the thing. I want to start off like this. Deontay Wilder not only double, triple, quadrupled down on saying that he believes Tyson Fury cheated. Now, I myself personally have made a video about this, showed the glove, show how hard it was to slip your hand up and down. And I just don't see how it's personal. I don't see how it's possible personally, but I will say this. He said a couple of things that I did not know, and I will have to check to see if they're true. So the first thing he said that stuck out to me was Tyson Fury had blood on like his knuckles. Now, I don't know how you get blood on your knuckles inside of the glove. So I really need to look up pictures of Tyson Fury. And I'll do that probably before I publish this and try to add that to this video. If it's true, if we can find blood on his hand wraps, because that right there may give a little bit of possibility that his hands wasn't where they were supposed to be if there is blood on his actual hand wraps. Because I didn't see any cuts on Tyson Fury's hands to put blood there from himself. With that being said, he also named another thing that stood out to me as well, or mentioned another thing that stood out to me as well, and that was the fact that he said inside his ear where it was bleeding, he had fingernail scratch marks. Now, I will say this, if that is true, that he has pictures, proof, a doctor, somebody saying that his actual scratches from fingernails, I will have to say that I would have to retract my statements about Tyson Fury sliding his hand down because it is impossible to get fingernail scratches inside your ear if the boxing glove is on correctly. Now, he did talk about he believed that there was egg weights in there. Um, he referred to Asbury saying that he said that they were using egg weights inside the gloves. And that right there, I don't, I, I can't, I cannot entertain that. I don't believe that's possible at all. I pretty much think that's at this point in stage impossible to do in this era. Maybe in the past you could have got away with that, but I don't think you get away with that today. But I will say, again, if he had fingernail scratch marks inside of his ear, and that was the real reason why he was bleeding was because the skin was scratched and not busted or torn from being hit then you know i don't know like i would I, I i don't i don't think tyson fury slipped his hands down but i will say if you have fingernail scratch marks in there then it, without a doubt definitively he was sliding his glove down i, I don't know how he did it because my hand is nowhere near as big as tyson fury's hand i'm nowhere near as tall as tyson fury he's 6'9 i'm 5'10 so i know his hand is way bigger than mine and I don't, I don't see how I could slide my hand down, let alone how you, a 6'9 guy could slide his hand down. But if there are fingernail marks in his ears, then he had to have been doing it. I'll say that. He had to have been. Again, with the egg weights, I don't believe the egg weight thing. Um, Ty, he, he referred to, um, I was about to say Tyson Perry. He referred to um, being poisoned, saying that he felt out of it. Again, I, I don't. He might have felt out of it, but I don't think it was due to being drugged. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say that he didn't feel drained. He didn't feel out of it. He didn't feel like himself because I'm not Deontay Wilder. Nobody else is. I don't know what he feels and nobody else can know what he feels inside of his own body. So I won't say he there's not a possibility he didn't feel like himself. But I'm going to say that with the toxicology reports and all the drug testing that they do, it's highly unlikely he was drugged because that would have popped up. He would have popped hot for some type of substance if that be the case. And I mean, I guess there is the possibility he did pop hot and he just didn't show the results, but I have to go off of evidence and not 
hearsay. And the evidence would point to the fact that he did not pop hot because nothing came out. Now, if you release his document showing that he did pop hot for a, a muscle relaxer or something that would give the same effect, then, I mean, yeah, I mean, there is a strong possibility that it's true. But to my knowledge, there is nothing that popped out in the toxicology. It doesn't per se have to be a, you know, a, a muscle relaxer. It could be <laughs> anything. Like they could have put like a Oxycontin in there, a Percocet, you know, any type of drug that'll give you that docile effect could have been used. But I'm just saying that I don't believe it based off. I have seen no evidence of him popping hot, which would have most definitely came up. So I, I, I don't know. Outside of that, um, he said that he's had injuries in the past and that he's never used excuses before. But then again, I, I would have to count that and say, well, you've never lost before. So there would no, be no need to bring up injuries that you had. Like, why would you make an excuse for a win? You know what I mean? And all, all but what, two of his wins have come by knockout. So there would be no need to bring up excuses or say, oh, I had this, I had that element when you won and then you won by knockout. So there's that. The other thing that he said too was he was talking about Bob Arum. And he was saying that it was Bob Arum was the reason why the fight never happened. That Arum didn't want to do it in America because they couldn't get fans. And that that's the whole reason why it never happened because they were supposed to supply the venue and they never did. He said Aaron was looking overseas, which could be believable because he was talking about Terrence Crawford fighting in the Middle East. So that does sound believable that Aaron could be looking overseas for fights and um, they never found it. And if that be the case, if Aaron was the reason why the fight never happened, if Aaron was the one that was supposed to get the venue and he never secured the venue, then I don't see how legally Tyson Fury could get out of that third fight because that would be on his team for the reason why the fight didn't happen and not on Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder also said that he's been training since September, which is good to hear. Because, I mean, like him or not, I want to see him in there with more top-tier guys to see how good or how bad he really is. It's hard to say with Deontay Wilder because people can argue that he hasn't fought the best of opposition. I mean, I've argued that I know the power's real, not because he's knocked out lower opposition, but because of the way he's knocked them out. Like putting Spilka into a seizure and etc. You're not it doesn't matter if you're fighting lower tier guys. You're not gonna knock them out in that fashion unless you have real power. That's the thing. You can knock out low tier guys, but it's how you're knocking them out. And and the way that he's knocking these guys out tells you that the power is real, regardless of competition level. Now, moving on past that, um, so he's been training since September. He's ready to fight. He said he wanted to fight come. January, early January to early February, which I know I did a video on a, a video a while back where there was reports that he actually wanted to fight Tyson Fury February, you know, for Black Black History Month. I believe it was on February 28th was the date that they were saying, but I looked it up on the calendar. I don't even think that falls on a Saturday, so that date wouldn't make sense. But I know the article that I was going off of said he did want to fight again in February against Tyson Fury, I guess to uh, avenge the loss that he had. So I, I don't know. Um, but it's good to hear that he's training. He listed people that he wanted to fight. He said Dillian White referred to Dillian White. He's been chasing after him like they had a bad breakup. He did say something suspect though in the interview. He said Dillian White been chasing me like we had a bad breakup when I had bomb pussy or good pussy, something to that extent. And I'm thinking like, yo, bro, you already been twerking. Don't make a comment like that. But um, I understood what he was saying that, you know, Dylan White's been after him like a stalker chick. But I, I do like the fact that he did throw White's name out there. Now, it's impossible for White to fight Deontay Wilder because he's already locked in for January to fight, fight Pavekin. But while speaking on Dillian White, Dillian White, he said, was talking about Ortiz was old, but then he got knocked out by a 41-year-old in Pavekin. Now, I could understand that argument, but... I don't I, I don't agree with the statement because Pavekin is old, but in my opinion, he's a lot higher tier of a fighter than Luis Ortiz. Like Ortiz to me really hasn't beat anybody. I don't see him as a boogeyman. Deontay Wilder considers him a boogeyman and he's entitled to that opinion. Now, I don't believe he is. I don't I don't believe Ortiz is 
a top 10 world fighter, but people could argue it. And, you know, that's your opinion. At the end of the day, the only way for it to be people's opinion to be proven is to see them in there with top guys and see how they do. So I can't say for sure whether he is or isn't. I just don't believe he's a boogeyman or a top 10 fighter. But with that being said, he said he did want Dillian White. He wanted to fight him. He named his name three times, actually. So he could be serious about it. But the only thing I don't like about it is what you see a lot in fighting sports or combat sports is that guys are avoided till they lose. And because White lost, now it almost seems like to me that that boosted Deontay's confidence that he can knock out Dillian White. And that might not be the case, but that's how it seems to me <clears throat> that you're finally calling this guy's name out after he lost. It's not a good look to me, but what is a good look is he said he would like to fight a Usyk. He would be open to an AJ. Um, who else did he say? He said Andy Ruiz, which would be a good fight because we'd see where Andy Ruiz is and be able to compare Ruiz to, um, you know, Ruiz Wilder to how AJ looked against Ruiz. So that's a good fight right there. And it's an easy fight to be made because it's an in-house fight. It's a PBC fight. So that's easy. So, I mean, and he was naming these if he doesn't get Tyson Fury. How do I look at um, this? I believe he wants Tyson Fury. I don't believe he wants some other guys that he named. I believe that he really wants Tyson Fury. And I believe that's why he opened up to go after Tyson Fury legally, to get the contract looked at by a mediator. So I think he's serious about it. And I will say this. I do not believe that Tyson Fury cheated. But what I do honestly believe is that Deontay Wilder believes that Tyson Fury cheated. And that's the thing. I don't have to believe it if Deontay Wilder believes it. Because I can't say Deontay Wilder is a liar if he's saying what he truly believes. I could say that I don't believe it, but it, it, it still doesn't change the fact that listening to Deontay Wilder talk, like I said, he double, triple, quadruple down on saying that Tyson Fury cheated. And he believed he cheated without a doubt, without question. He brought up how he had the boar meat against Klitschko, insinuating that he was on steroids <laughs> for that fight. So, I mean, the thing is, his whole argument was, how can people question whether Tyson Fury is a cheater when he's got a history of cheating? And I mean, that's a good argument to make. You know, you're, you're laying out your, your case against his character. But the thing is, it's like a thief, right? I could steal 100 candy bars, walk into a gas station, walk out that gas station and a candy bar went missing. That doesn't mean I stole that missing candy bar. So that's the thing. It doesn't take away the fact that you're a thief, but at that moment, at that point in time, you might not have been the one that stole that candy bar, so therefore you're not guilty of that crime. What I'm saying is Tyson Fury may have cheated in the past, but it has no bearing on a fight if he did not cheat in that particular fight. I can understand the mindset of saying that, you know, he has a track record of cheating, and because of that and the things that you saw, you're using reasoning to put it together that he did cheat. But again, I just see how hard it is to move your hand around with gall wraps, especially in a glove. And I don't think he could do it. But I have to circle back what I said earlier. If they were truly fingernail scratch marks inside his ear, then I would have to concede my point because there's only one way that that could happen. And that's if he actually slid his fingers down. Now, I said at the the beginning of this video that I put a picture up, I'm not going to try to go through here because, like I said, I'm at work and I don't have a lot of time to do much more of this video. So I'll put a picture at the end if I can find a bloody picture on Google Images of his hand wraps because I'd be very interested to see that. And I've got to look at the shorts to make sure it's from the second fight. But if I can find that, I will say this. I do not believe it, but it does give credence to what he has been saying if there are scratch marks. Um, I'm trying to think what else he said. So I went over, you know, him saying Tyson Fury cheated, him still training, him ready for a fight, the people he wanted to fight. Um, oh, I wanted to mention this. I'm probably missing a lot because there's a lot going on around me, but um, I wanted to say this. One thing I liked about Deontay Wilder, and this is non-fight related, 
So if you made it this far, this is what I really liked about him. Whenever he was giving his interview with Brian, you saw him, he was like leaning back, had his arm, I think the window was down and his arm was out the window and it was laid across the leather that's on the side panel of the door. After he pulled his arm off, he looked at it, he must have seen a smudge because he grabbed a t-shirt and started walking. Um, wiping the the prints, the smudge off of the leather. I like that. I like that because a lot of people with money, they don't take pride in what they have. They just let it do whatever. They don't they don't wash it. They don't wax it themselves. They don't clean the insides themselves. You know, they got money. It's just a material thing. It doesn't mean much. So I did like the fact that I saw him wiping down that leather because it shows you that he appreciates what he has, and that's a good quality to have. Um. I just thought I'd throw that in there. Somebody who, you know, likes vehicles and cars and likes to take care of things. Y'all saw I almost cried whenever I scratched my power rack, if y'all seen that video. So, I mean, you know, I like that. I like to see people take pride of what they've obtained, what they've paid for, what they own. It's, it, it's just a, a character strength, in my opinion, when you actually care about what you own. So, I'll probably end it there on that note. Um... I will say this. I do not think Deontay Wilder is scared of Tyson Fury. I truly believe he wants that third fight. I truly believe that he believes that Tyson Fury cheated. I'm still not so on Wilder's side with believing it. I just, I don't think he did cheat. But again, it all comes down to those fingernails in the ear because that to me is definitive proof. If you've got fingernail scratch marks inside your ear, I know it sounds like I'm beating a dead dog, but I just got to keep stressing it because people don't really listen to what people say and people take things out of context and they'll jump to the conclusion. Oh, there's no way Tony's reviews would believe it. He said he wouldn't believe it. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, and I'm not saying at the same time that, oh, I believe it. I believe it. I'm for wild or fuck fury. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is, if there were fingernail scratch marks inside of his ear, then that is definitive proof, in my opinion. In my opinion, from having boxing gloves on, strapping them up more than one time in my life, in my opinion, if he can truly show proof of fingernail scratch marks inside of his ear, and that's the reason why it was bleeding, was due to a fingernail scratching a chunk out of his ear, then I would have to say that I believe that he was finding some way to pull down them gloves, some way. I don't really personally see how it's beneficial to do that. But again, there's only one way you could scratch the inside of somebody's ear and you'd have to be pulling down your hand. So all in all, again, I will say this to conclude what I was doing and I got on a little tangent. I don't believe Deontay Wilder is scared to fight Tyson Fury. I believe he truly wants that third fight. I think the third fight is a good fight, not because of all the cheating aspects. I don't think that dismisses the cheating because even if Tyson Fury comes out and beats him the third time it doesn't take away the fact that Deontay Wilder will forever feel like he got cheated and it doesn't take away the fact that there is a slim possibility that Tyson Fury cheated slim in my opinion so regardless how the third fight turns out it doesn't take away the fact of whether there was cheating or not cheating going on in that second fight but um I think he wants it the only thing that I'm scared of for Deontay Wilder is in that third fight, if he gets embarrassed and, and after all this glove shit, the, everybody's going to be watching it. The WBC is not going to let it go down. The commission is not going to let it go down. Nobody's going to let it go down. If he loses to Tyson Fury in that third fight in the same way or worse fashion than he did in that second fight, it's going to be hard for him to show his face and hard for him to respond to anything after making all these claims because it seems like he believes that the only way Tyson Fury could beat him like that is by cheating. And if he gets beat like that, when it's definitive, there's no cheating going on. I don't know what that's going to do to his psyche because he's setting himself up for failure and he's setting himself up for a lot of people to talk a lot of shit about him. If he loses again to Tyson Fury, I did want to say this. I forgot to bring this up and I wish I would have put this at the beginning of the video because this right here was the reason why a big reason why Deontay Wilder has gained a lot of respect with me, okay? First thing I'm going to say is he turned down the franchise belt when the WBC offered it to him. Second thing, this Bridger weight, he was asked about it. How does he feel about that weight class? And he said, no, I'm a heavyweight. 
I don't want to fight at that. I don't want to do it. He even mentioned the fact that it seemed like the WBC was trying to make him the face of it and tell her make that belt to him. And he denied it. He turned it down. He said he's a heavyweight. He said, I punch so hard, I'll probably kill guys at that weight because I'm fighting guys 30, 50 pounds heavier than me. Now, I don't know if he'll literally kill him, but I like his mind. And I like that he turned down that bullshit belt. And this is the second time that he turned down a bullshit belt. And I respect that. And while I'm saying that, it made me remember that he also talked about why he got rid of Mark Breland. Not going to get into the poisoning, not going to get into any of his water being spiked. I talked about that a little bit earlier. But what he said was, and this is a good analogy. I like, I like how he said this. He said, if you go to your job and you do something that your boss tells you not to do, what's going to happen to you? Brian said you'll get reprimanded. Wilder was trying to go to the, allude to the fact that you would get fired. And that's true. You would get fired. I know people will argue that Mark Breland saved his life. Mark Breland threw in the towel because he cared about him. But at the end of the day, Deontay Wilder is the boss. And at the end of the day, whether you agree or disagree that Breland saved his life, at the end of the day, Breland threw that towel. And Deontay Wilder has made it clear in every interview, every time he's talked about it, that he wants to go out on his shield. And if that is his one stipulation... And regardless how you feel about Deontay Wilder, if you throw that towel out there, then you are throwing it out there to get fired. And again, I believe that's a dumb mindset. You know, nobody wants a towel to be thrown in. Nobody wants to give up, especially when you're fighting. I feel the same way as Deontay Wilder. I would rather die than lose. And I felt the same way. I've mentioned this whenever we talked about it earlier. Whenever I go, whenever I used to fight, the only thing going through my mind was how can I kill this person faster than they can kill me? What is the fastest way I can kill this person? Because that's how I looked at it, because it is a hurt game and anything can happen. And I'm trying to take that person out quicker than they can take me out so I don't get hurt. So I understand that mindset. I disagree with wanting to catch a body. I never wanted to kill anybody. But when I got in that ring, my intentions is to kill that person. If I was fighting, not, not in sparring, but in the real deal fight, if I'm fighting you, my only thing going is, hell, even if you run up on me in a street fight, and I haven't been in a street fight in a long time, but if you were to fight me, if you were to run up on me, the only thing that's going to go through my mind is what is the quickest way I can kill you? Because you have to have that mindset not to get hurt, in my opinion. If you don't have that mindset, then you're, you're subconsciously holding yourself back. So... I don't hold that against him, but again, everybody says they want to go out on their shield. Everybody says that they would rather die in there, but it's dumb. I know it's a dumb mentality for me to have. I would be pissed if a person threw out a towel, but I understand why Mark Breland did it. And I don't believe he should have been fired off that alone. But again, if Deontay Wilder's only rule is don't throw in the towel, I don't care if I die. And you save him because you care about him and you get fired, then that at the end of the day is a risk that you took because you knew the ultimatum. You knew the stipulation. You knew if you threw that towel out there, that's the only thing he told you not to do. He also spoke on JD's saying that he gave him an earful about the gloves because Brian asked him about, well, JD's was in there while your hands were getting. Like I said, Brian, man, let me do this for Brian. And I can't keep ranting for too much longer because I got to get back to work. But, um, Brian, you are an amazing interviewer. Let me clap again. Because he asked him hard questions and real questions. He asked him about JD's being in there whenever Tyson Fury was getting his hand wrapped, like I said. And um, Wilder was like, he gave him an earful. But, I mean, maybe at the end of the day, Water felt like JD's was inexperienced and didn't see it, didn't catch it, whatever. I don't know what they said. I'm not going to pretend to know what they said. But he did ask him about it, and Water did say he gave JD's an earful. He also said that they are looking for another trainer, but they haven't put that out there yet of who they're going to pick to come in in Breland's, I guess I can't say absence, but now that they fired Breland, who they're going to bring in. But, um... Again, overall, I thought it was a very good interview. I, I liked a lot of the things that Deontay Wilder said. I didn't agree with everything he said, like the cheating part. But um, I would be curious to see 
in just a couple of seconds if I could find a picture of blood on Tyson Fury's hand wraps. And I would be curious to see if Deontay Wilder can release photos or a doctor's statement saying that those gashes were caused by fingernails. Because you can tell. It's like whenever somebody is murdered, you can see if there's scratch marks on them. You could tell whether it's a knife, fingernails, you know, a blunt object. Like, they'll be able to tell if they are truly scratch marks by looking at the consistency of the scratch, the size of the scratch, the way it's raked across. So again, like I said, I, I, I can say this wholeheartedly. I do not believe in Glovegate, but if he can prove that there were fingernail scratch marks in, in, in his ear, then I will concede and say that more than likely Tyson Fury was cheating and I'll retract the videos that I put up. That that's to be honest, because you know what? There's one thing about me that some of my subs don't like and some do like, but you need to understand if you're new to my channel, I'm not biased to any of these guys. I'm human. I can make mistakes. And if I make a mistake, I rectify my mistake. If I call something wrong, I always come on here and say I was wrong. So again, I am not above saying I was wrong if Deontay Water can provide proof. And he said if Tyson Fury takes him to court for defamation, he's got proof. That's why he believes Tyson Fury won't do it. But on that note, let me get back to work, guys. I appreciate y'all for listening because this is probably like a 20-minute video. And again, somewhere at the end of this, I'm going to try to put a picture of the glove. I mean, of the hand wraps to see if there's blood there. Leave a comment. Let me know. I know this video was long, so you may or may not make it to the end. Thank y'all again for watching.